It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to my series where I'm playing as the USSSSSSR. Okay, so we are training our troops right now. We've learned a little bit about training of troops. You can see now they're working up their skill level. They only get to a maximum of three. Most people don't like to work over experience three because it's kind of pointless, really. You don't gain anything extra from that. But just for the purpose of this, I'm going to train the other divisions up. What you can normally do is you could split them off. That would be an option. Anyway, infantry equipment one's done. And at this point, this is a new kind of weapon. It's like a, It looks like a machine gun, doesn't it? So... It's like, a, is that a machine gun and a landmine, I think? Yeah, I think it is. Anyway, so we're going to go for this. We are going to go for it early. Um, but, well, there's no but. No, we're going to go for it early. We're going to suffer from the penalty of going for it early. And we'll be able to produce new, more up-to-date guns. Which is a benefit for all the stats, so we're definitely going to do that. Um, and then we'll start making those new guns and go from there. So right now we are supplying weapons to China. How is that going? We had a last shipment 30 days ago, and let's have a look if... Yeah, we delivered 30,000 guns and 20 convoys to them on the 12th of January. What? Oh, that's the next one, isn't it? No? Oh, that's equipment since the 12th of January, so we've supplied them 30,000 infantry equipment and 20,000 artillery. Okay, so... Oh, that's just telling us we're fabricating claims. Okay, so modified government, we've got more political power again. So in that case, we probably want to go for small arms. So this this improves research time with small arms. There's a motorized one as well. This one's a good one because it boosts research of rocket artillery as well. Um, I think we're going to go for small arms. Yeah, we're going to go for small arms because that's going to increase the research. Oh, we're still forgetting about the mobilization. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. Never mind. Nah, never mind. It's okay. We, we don't desperately need that anyway. Oh, the Japanese are pushing in. They've got pockets. Pockets all in Japan. Okay, we're going to stop the training now. Because remember, training reduces organization. So we want to build the organization back up again. And it's on its way. Alright, guys. So this is the operation. This is the plan. We're going to call this Operation... Uh, at operation Minor. Oh, God. Operation Asian Minor, right? Asian Minor. Oh, boy. Where is this going? Okay, so what we're going to do is declare war. So now we are at war with these two countries. Excellent. Okay, so now what we're going to do is tell our mountain divisions. Oh, we've got some extras. Oh, God. Um, to attack. Okay. Actually, know what we're going to do. We're actually going to hold position. And they're going to attack into us. The, the AI always does this. They always attack into us initially. I don't know why they do that. Uh, anyway, then we're going to attack back. And they see initially we're not actually making a lot of gains. There's lots of... Uh, lots of blobs here that are showing that we're losing. So we're actually going to gain this province, but none of the others. So, okay, improved railroads done, computer machines done. So extra options you get with computer machines is option for decryption. If you've got a decryption or an encryption bonus, you can see on the map what troops they've got and it gives you a bit more of an idea of whether you, whether, you want to, whether you want to attack or not. And also gives you, if you've got an encryption bonus, you also get an attack bonus as well, about 5% extra attack, which is always good. So it's always a nice idea to research this early. Improved railroad is done. I think we're going to go for next. It doesn't matter. We need these two to get this one. So we're going to go for transpolar flights. So we made our initial attack, then we stopped the attack because it wasn't working. But I think we're probably still going to try and get this province. This is this is a very tricky assault, this one. Yep, we've not managed to make any gains there. No gains at all. Okay, so we've softened up a wee bit. Um, I think we're going to push in with the tanks now. This is probably not going to be that effective either because we are attacking into hills with tanks, which it just isn't a good idea. I think we'll initially push. No, we've made some gains here. That's good. And we're pushing in some more. Excellent. Okay, so it's just notified me. No, nope, it did notify me there was a supply problem, but then the supply problem has been fixed. Um, as you expand into enemy territories, you've got to use their roads. And as you attack over roads, you find that you damage the roads as you move. So therefore, you have to repair them. We'll find that out a little bit later. There you go. We are making some gains now. We are losing a little bit. As they move in, though, if you find that 50% of your bubbles are green and 50% are red, you tend to be winning in that circumstance. Because what will happen is the, the areas where you push into when you are successful um, will uh, help out other divisions, so they'll attack from different sides and corners. Anyway, we're going to stop now. And we're going to form a new front here. And then we're going to push directly towards Istanbul. So we're going to push all the troops here. There's a bit of a supply problem here. 
It might be because the roads are damaged. No, they're not. The roads are still okay. So we're going to move our troops here. We're waiting for the new ones. Building up a little bit of a planning bonus. And when you're ready, go. Alright, they're going to push directly into... Is it Trabazon? And being really successful. So, attacking into mountains with tanks isn't always a good idea. But I've got a huge technological advantage. And... Yeah, it's a big technological advantage as well. I forgot about my planes as well, I think about it. So we'll put air superiority and close air support on now. So they're actively going to give us an assistance in the air. Also, what you can do with your battle plans when you're executing, you can actually say if you want to be aggressive, balanced, or careful. Careful will try and move very slowly and avoid heavy fortifications, therefore avoiding the instance of the AI surrounding you. Balance is a bit of both, and aggressive means they'll actively push really aggressively, which tends to, uh, which tends to put yourself into more situations where you could get uh, overwhelmed, such as scenarios where the AI tries to surround you. If you've not got many divisions, you don't want to go for aggressive. But right now, we've got lots of divisions. It's really thick across the front, so we're, we're doing pretty much okay. Right now, pretty much all green bubbles. Oh, red one there. No, no, we're doing okay. So we can also see how things are going by looking at this screen. So if you go on to World Tension, click on Current Wars, you can see the Soviet-Russian War. And you can see we've lost 27,000 men. They've lost 154,000. Wow. Okay. Um, here, there's a naval combat happening. You get notified on screen that icon is there in the Black Sea. You can go to the battle, and it's a battle between our ships and four submarines. The problem with submarines is they, they just dive underwater. So they'll see you come in, they'll dive underwater, and then they'll be invisible. They're very difficult to detect because they're very small. You need destroyers to take out submarines, but I don't have any. So right now, this is going to be a crazy back and forth. We also have a naval battle that happened here as well, where some uh, naval bombers by uh, uh, Turkey... Uh, struck some of our ships. No casualties though. In fact, nothing actually happened. They engaged each other, but nothing happened. Okay. Um, a very anticlimactic battle. What we're going to do is assign our naval bombers to this province and then tell them to attack into the, the Black Sea. This will make it more likely that they'll be able to hit those submarines. As you imagine, planes are very fast, so they'll be able to hit the submarines before they get to dive and uh, whatnot. Okay, we formed a pocket. Very uh, The best pockets are the ones you unintentionally make. We've formed it now here, so we'll be able to surround the troops that we've got. Japanese build-up. Ooh, here we go. So this is an event between the Japanese and the Soviets. <clears throat> the Munich Agreement and France-British Alliance. Okay, so you've got an option here that you have a 60% chance of a successful raid, or lose some political power, or 40% chance of a failed raid. Or you can just say to yourself, you cannot afford a war with Japan, so we just hold back. And what this will do is it'll give uh, Japan more national unity. So we're going to go for this one. We're going to gamble. So if we gamble and we win, we get some little buffs. If we lose, then, well, we, we lose. Okay, we failed the raid. So we lost 20,000 manpower. We lost 25 political power. We gained 5 army experience. It was not worth it. But we'll attack the Japanese another day. Fight another day. Okay, so the field hospital is done. I think we're going to go for logistics now. Uh, we're going to go for the final upgrade at the top, which is Ocean Going Navy. And we're going to go for the improve of elastic defense of mobile warfare. Which is a bit of a benefit too, because it's a bit of a discount. We get a bit of a discount on that one, so we can start pushing through those pretty quick. Okay, missing equipment. So right now, we're running low on light tanks. And the reason why is because we're not producing them. And as you'd imagine, that's a, that's a bit of an issue, obviously. Uh, but for the time being, it's going to be okay just for now. Because uh, <clears throat> we are going to swap our light tanks onto medium tanks eventually. So... We don't want to be producing any more light tanks. So that game's letting us know that we're losing light tanks, but you don't have any to replace them. And like, that's not a problem. We'll, we'll get on that immediately. Uh, so if you look light tanks, we've only got 382 left. So that is a bit of a concern. Um, okay, and tactical bombers as well. We're using tactical bombers here and we've lost one. The game's letting us know that we're not making new tactical bombers. So we're not replacing our losses. And if you look really closely... Nope, there's actually nothing happening here now. Uh, I think I'll take off the close air support. Um... But I'll leave the air superiority because we still have air superiority in this region. Okay, this is a base. Uh, base is a very low in supply. And this is it now. So, as you can see, this region has very, very low supply. It has a maximum capability of 4. And it is currently taking 20. So that is a severe reduction. What happens here is we, we get a massive penalty. So how much damage we do. 
and it also uh, causes attrition. Now, basically, attrition just means losing supplies and troops with not actively fighting in combat. So that's a big concern. I think what we're going to try and do is manually close these pockets now and uh, move further forward. No, I can't do that. So I was just attacking right click then I was pressing H for hold ground. Um, so there we go, we finally got rid of a successful purge. The purge is now complete and the Travosky plot has been purged, has been removed. So now we're a bit further forward. There you go. So all we have now is the home of the revolution is the construction speed penalty. But aside from that, everything else is pretty good. So we're still having officers purge, but we haven't fully completed the purge yet. It isn't done until like 2020, wasn't it? Okay, so we've had some kind of event in the game that's occurred uh, that's caused us to lose this. So now we have an option to reduce partisans if we want to. This is an event that you don't research. This one just fires by itself when the event happens. So we don't need to worry about that. What we're going to do now is manually select all the troops and just tell them to attack into this province. 15 divisions. If you hover over it, it actually says how much manpower. 32,000 manpower. And it's 76,000. 77,000. It's a lot of troops. There you go. Perfect. And now if you press on the supply, there's no more supply problems. As you push further and further into enemy territory, you'll find that you get, you get less and less supply issues. Okay, lowers officer's penalty. We're still slowly but truly getting rid of the purge. We've also got another option to go for something extra. We can go for concealment, paratroopers, close air support, submarines, capital ships. Ooh, I don't really know what to do here. No. <clears throat> we can go for this one. We did plan on doing that one, didn't we? The same ideological bonus. Yeah, we'll do that one. This will make us really super, 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 super big friends with Spain. Will Spain join our alliance? Not yet. So they don't want to join our alliance because that will draw them into the war that we're currently in. So they don't want that. So we have a non-aggressive pact. We're going to be friends. I don't actually sure if non-aggression packs actually increase my chance of being friends. But let's go for access as well. Uh, and then we can also boost relations as well. Now, boosting relations in Hearts of Iron 4 has very little purpose. It, the only purpose is if it, you're very slow, if you're very, if you're just very close to not joining your faction, and you can just push them over the edge by giving them a bit more political power. So this will lose some political power, but we've got so much extra, it doesn't matter. And it'll boost our relations to a certain amount. Very similar to how it is in Europa Universalis 4. Got combat happening at sea here. Back and forth with the submarines. Back and forth. We don't have any destroyers, so we... we well, we do have... Actually, no. No, they're light cruisers. You need destroyers for that to hit those submarines, so we don't have destroyers. So it's a... It's, it's going to be possible, but it's very unlikely. We're going to go for encryption as well as decryption. Okay, we're having insufficient supply issues. We need tungsten. It's probably because we're producing new tanks right now, so it's becoming an issue. So we're going to get more... More Tugston from the capital of Europe of Tugston, aka Portugal. So they are currently pushing in right now and they've lost all their planning bonus. Well, most of it anyway. So what I could do is stop them, stop, tell them to stop their attack. And then what I could do on top of that off as well is I could reorganize the second attack. We're going to try and push into Istanbul now. Oh, this is interesting. So our naval bombers hit two Turkish convoys and sunk them as a naval battle. Here you go. The war is over and they've... The Turkey troops have said, we can't win this. The war is over. GG, no re. So we are going to puppet them. <clears throat> we are going to puppet. Now, what is a puppet? A puppet is like a an, an obedient country. So they will follow the same ideology of you. They'll go to war with you. They'll be in the same faction as you. They'll give you supplies for free. So if I have any chromium, I've got it from Turkey. So that's never going to be a big deal anymore. And that's pretty much it. We have now have the, t the puppet of Turkey, the Turkey Socialist Republic. Ooh, the hammer and sickle, boys. Okay, so I can also request their forces as well, if I ever said I wanted their forces. When the war ends, you lose all the forces, so there you go. So they're a part of uh, the common turn now. So we have access to all this region, which is really, really good. Okay, so what do we do now? Oh, we do have access through the strait as well now, which is also good news. All right, let's get all these troops back and move them back here. 
So what I'm doing now is setting a garrison, which is V, and just selecting this location. So they're all going to move. I just don't want them hanging about in this territory. So what we're doing for tanks right now, we are behind on tanks by a thousand, so that is a bit of a concern. It's probably because we're trying to produce more tanks and we don't have any extras. So that is a, a bit of a concern. Alright, I think it might be time right now to make a new division. So, we talked a bit about before about making a new division. So you go into the division designer, you select what division you want, and we're going to get the game. So this is the, the new uh, Soviet tank force. There we go. Team. The new Soviet tank. And we'll go for that. It's going to be elite division, so it means it will get supplied first in the theatre. We're going to add on initially some motorised divisions. <clears throat> and we're also going to add on some tank divisions. So one thing you need to be aware of is you need to keep your organisation at least above 30. Because if it drops too low, you're going to have concerns with the troops not being able to fight long enough. Uh, it's always seemed to be a better idea to go for more mobile infantry <clears throat> than it is to go for tanks. That's just it's a rule of thumb that I've just noticed. So that organization is okay, 42, or we can increase it to 46. Now nah, it's not worth it, we'll just go for that. That's pretty good, we can add on some more tanks in future if need be. Uh, we're going to go for engineers, we're going to go for recons, we're going to go for maintenance crews, we're going to go for field hospitals, and if we want to, we can add some artillery on. Yeah, let's have the artillery on. So this is going to cost 110 experience to create this brand new, new Soviet tank. And what we're going to do is kill those off, get rid of this, because we're not going to need these anymore, because we're going to produce our new tank, and we're going to produce four of those. And there we go. We're producing our new tanks. Now what we'll do at some stage as well is we'll switch out our old tanks to the new ones as well. Yeah, we eventually will do that. Eventually. So Turkey right now is kind of vulnerable. They need our defense because they're not producing any divisions. But they will eventually get more and more and more. They're on service by requirement as well. Which is a bit of a concern for them. So missing equipment. We've still got light tanks and naval bombers that are still a bit beaten up. So we'll get rid of these divisions because we've they have served their purpose. We don't really need them anymore. We can get out of Black Sea now. So what we're going to do is select all our fleets. We should just select the fleet and I'm holding shift and clicking to grab all the extra fleets. I roughly know where they are if I'm just playing the game anyway. So I'll just select them and there you go, I'll merge them all up. So now all the fleets should join up. Should join up. Maybe we should uh, assign them to here. And then go to Helsinki. Yep, they're all going to meet up there, okay. I hold down shift there as well. If you look on this... You right, if you hold down shift and right click, you can set this as the home base. The only issue is if you set too many troops to a home base, is it becomes overwhelmed, and therefore they can't repair that many ships when they're based in that port. So you kind of got to spread them out. The fall of Nanjing. The uh, the Chinese are actually doing incredibly well now. I think about it. Maybe I should be supplying my stuff to China. So what we're going to do is a few little tweaks and adjustments. What I'm going to do is I am going to give my equipment now. So I'm going to end my lend lease. Oh. Oh, I thought I already had a lend lease with them. Oh, I guess when I'm at war, I can't offer a lend lease. Okay, well, that's convenient. So there's two things that need to be aware of. <clears throat> the People's Republic of China has a special attribute that if, if China gets a large amount of communism, these states will start to switch the People's Republic. And of course, we're all for communism, guys. We are the communists of communists. We are the, the real revolution. So we need to convert as much of the nation of the world to communism. So let's do that. So let's, so let's first of all, um, influence them. Where is that? So you go, boost popularity. So what I can do is boost communism in this nation. On top of that as well, we're also going to send... Do you know what we probably could do is we could probably send some volunteers now, couldn't we? We could try out our new medium tank divisions. Now, we'll save that for later. Anyway, so we're going to go for this. Send some transports. Are they going to receive that? It says they need convoys. Convoys aren't going to help them right now. Okay, we'll send 100 convoys. And some artillery. And also some supplies. Not a lot, just a few. It says they don't have enough convoys, but they don't have a connection with the coast. I don't really know what that means. So we'll just send these, and then we'll be able to see if they receive them or not. 
Ocean Going Navy is complete. We're going to go found the PCDI, which gives a conversion for civilian to military factory bonus to minus 20%. That's pretty big. By the way, I never actually showed you how to convert factories, did I? So if you go into here and you go click on convert to factories to military factories, you can see this region has three civilian factories. You can convert it to a military factory. And these ones, this one's got three military factories. So you can convert them to civilian factories. That's just how you do it, really. I've never needed, really needed to do that, you know. I feel like the game gives you like a very, a very large and luxurious amount of civilian factories. I guess one my one gripe is that I feel like you're given probably a little bit too. Uh, the production of civilian and military factories is a bit high. Okay, at this point, you have a choice. You can go for Blitzkrieg, which adds extra armor and extra blade truth for your tanks, or you can go for Mobile Warfare which boosts your organization for your mobile divisions. Now, both of them are equally very good, but I just like having lots of breakthrough and really powerful tanks. So we're going for the tank one. <clears throat> so Meng Kukyu, Meng Kuku has been annexed by China. Are we receiving their equipment? Let's have a look. So we're receiving eight days. So let's actually see if they actually get the gear that we're making for them. I'm not actually 100% sure if that will actually happen. Two, one. Yep, they have received it. And they've received 100 convoys as well. Aren't they lucky? They don't even need convoys because they're not even attached to the sea. Maybe this is bugged. Yeah, I think that's probably bugged. All right, never mind. Um, send the new one without the convoys. Infantry equipment three is complete. We can actually produce some actual proper guns now. Some real good machine guns. No more rifles, boys. We're entering into full automatic gun territory now. So we're going to convert these old guns into the new ones. So we do lose a lot of retention for that, but it's not a massive deal. Um, the only deal that's going to be a slight issue is the fact that our lend lease is wrong now. We're not actually producing, so they'll be receiving zero because we're not producing any guns. So I'll send you the new guns, boys. Would you like some of our new guns? I think they would. We are slowly converting nationalist China towards communism. There you go. And as, as they reach, I think, about 40-50%, more states start to flip to the People's Republic. And the People's Republic are going to be our new buddies. Okay, so Nash Republic in Spain, are you going to join our faction now? No, not interested. In that case, then we'll just get rid of the uh, improved relations. Oh, no, we already have done. We've already improved it. Never mind. Okay, so we've got an extra research slot. So I think we might go for better artillery. Yep, we did on time. Oh, no, we can, I can go for the extra production. I think it's always important to go for the production first. Uh, and we're going to have this finish in a little while too, so we'll switch this on to the extra machine tools that gives the extra production re retention. Okay. Alright, so this is a good stage to teach you something new. So we're going to learn about custom variants. So what we're going to do now is produce a custom variation on a tank. So we have 140 army experience. So army experience is for two reasons. Modifying existing divisions and creating new division templates. So what we'll do is we'll go into here for production and we're going to make a custom variant of the A32. When you go into here, you've got the light tank here, the old one, and then the medium tank. So we can create a variation of that. And we're going to call this the, I guess we're going to call this the feed, the feed 230. No, the F, that sounds stupid. <laughs> the F32, there we go. The, 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 Jap Destroyer. No, no, we're not going to be attacking Japan, are we? <laughs> the the King of Europe. There you go. If you wanted something corny, there you go. Old Relic Tank. So what you can do here is I usually improve the reliability. Then I produce, make the gun a little bit better as well. And then eventually you run out of production costs. So you got to switch out to something else. There you go. We've run out of production. There you go. The King of Europe is a new variation of tank. You lose a tiny little bit of, ver uh, of retention efficiency, but you get to produce a brand new tank. And now if you look really closely at one of our tank divisions, actually we don't have any tank divisions now, now I think about it. These are all the old models, so we need to switch these out. I think we'll probably do that now, actually. So we can click here and change division template like I did before and go for the new Soviet tank. So right now we are going to need 4,600 medium tanks to fulfill this. So, mm, I'm going to do this anyway, and we're going to gain back loads of light tanks. <laughs> so many light tanks. I think we might give our light tanks. You now I think about it. We might give our light tanks to China. Would you like our light tanks? I think they'd love our light tanks, wouldn't they? 
Are they about to receive a shipment? They're receiving it next in 14 days. So we'll let them get the next shipment and then we'll send another one. Because if you send a new lend lease, it resets it to 30 days. So I want them to get the, the new guns that I'm sending them. Okay, that's perfect. That's research. So we're going to go for the advanced machine tools that adds an extra production efficiency cap, an extra 5%, which is good. Okay, have you received my stuff yet? Five days, four days, three days. And done. There you go. Okay. So we're going to do another modify lend lease and then we're going to give them some of our old tanks. We have loads of old ones. So what we're going to give them is a hundred of our old tanks. We're never going to use these tanks, so it's absolutely pointless having them. What is a good idea you might want to do in the future is you can migrate medium and light tanks and mix them in together. That's an idea, but eventually you'll eventually swap out all the mediums. Now light tanks, don't get me wrong, are good. Light tanks are good. They've got more speed than medium tanks. Um, that's pretty much it, but it's just more speed to be honest with you. Uh, but don't don't discredit them. It's not like light tanks become obsolete. I just prefer to have medium tanks because they have more attack, more defense, uh, more breakthrough, uh, but they're just not as fast. Okay, what did we go for this? So we went for the found the uh, PCDI. So we have a choice now. Now these are political based decisions. So we have a choice. We can either go for anti-fascist diplomacy, which is more historical. Or we go for anti-capitalist diplomacy, which we're kind of siding, uh, siding with the Axis and siding with the, uh, siding with the, the demo we're siding with the democra democracies, or we're siding with the fascists. So we're going to go the historical route. We are going to go here. Uh, we are we're going to work down this tree. But we have lessons of war that's appeared now, so we are going to go for this one, which gives lots of army technology, land doctrine research, and removes officers purged early as well. So we definitely want to do that. Um, and then also there's an extra one at the bottom that gives extra research slot, which is always a good idea to go for if the option is there. German Reich claims the Memel. Another, another national focus by Germany, claiming that slither of land. I believe it's got, it's got very little population, but I believe it's got, uh, I think it's got like two, maybe one civilian factory, maybe, I'm not sure. I've got a funny suspicion here that I probably shouldn't send so much stuff towards Republic of China. I probably should give it to mainland China. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Logistics is done. Okay, so we're 939 now, so we can go for more advanced tech. So I always like to go for extra recon. Uh, reconnaissance gives the extra bonus of having a tactical advantage when you invade in battle. Therefore, an actual advantage to the amount of damage you can deal. So that's a really good one to go for. We're having a bit of issue with resources. We're a bit behind on tungsten, so we're going to ask we're going to ask Portugal for some more tungsten, please. Portugal, the home, the, 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 the land of the Tugstons. Ooh, they're doing really well breaking out here. Okay, if this goes, if the S hits the fan, uh, we are probably going to send supplies to the, the main nationalist China. I keep calling it nationalist China. That's, how, that's what it was called in Hearts of Iron 2. But now it's called just China. Just boring China. Okay, we're going to go for the National Unity guy. 67% National Unity. Very, very high. It would be a lot higher if I didn't, <laughs> if I actually fully declared war on Turkey. But And at this point, my computer crashed. Uh, it was pretty much coming to the end of the video anyway, so you've not missed anything. Uh, you will resume from the next episode where you left off. Remember guys to like and subscribe and also leave a comment and how unpredictable this ending was. <laughs> Guys, have a good day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.